memories you I got. You also stole a jukebox from the Peach Pit? The show was over. It's crazy. It was like... Anything I just that, ripped like, it off the counter. It was glued down. down. I didn't expect... Did you know they were glued to the counter? Yeah. Oh, because you tried to move them right. to, for a shot? No, because nobody never... else stole one. What are you talking about? Of course we didn't know it was glued down to the counter. Without any further ado, let's make it happen. The 9021 panel, Tori Spelling. Shannon Darney. Jimmy Garth. Jimmy Garth. Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. There you go. Gabriel Contreras! Come right up! Oh yeah! <laughs> Jason Priestley! <laughs> Ian Zang! Oh, there What's my name? You're fired. Oh, nuts. Brian Austin Green. <laughs> Give it up, the panel 90210. Oh man, have a seat, relax. There's microphones for you guys to share, they're all on. You may have to share a mic or two. Settle in, relax. I'm good. You got Hello. it? There you go, you're good to go. You're good. Hey, Brian. Hi. Okay, so we don't have to share mics. There's one for each of us. There might be one you might have to share. I think there's six oh, mics, geez. seven people. All right. But anyhow, just a question for all you guys. I've got a couple general softball questions, then we'll open it up to the audience. Uh, basically, the series ran for 10 years. What do you think? I know. What do you think keeps it so successful and keeps it in syndication? What elements do you think of the show just makes it relevant to this day? And we, we, can, just go, we can just go down the line. We can just go down the line. First of all, there's a lot of people in this tent. This is amazing. Thank you all for being here. That's really incredible. Thank you so much for supporting us being here and supporting the show. I think... Honestly, I think it's the fans that have kept us on for, uh, for as long as we've been on and kept us in syndication for, for years. So thank you. Yeah, what was the question? It was just what, what made the six, what do you think made the show so successful, 10 years running, always in syndication? I, you know, I think the fact that, uh, I think it was a glitz and glamour of Beverly Hills initially that made people tune in. Uh, then my amazing fellow castmates here, what they were able to deliver and elevate the material. And the material itself was, at the right time, uh, delivered in a way that made it accessible to young adults all over the world. Mm -hmm. It was the right, right show at the right time. Mm -hmm. And why do you think it's still relevant now? People still love it. Because it's awesome! <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's awesome. That's that why. guy's got a hand like a two by six. <laughs> I think, I think people also are kind of uh, nostalgic nowadays for, for the 90s and, and, you know, the shows and the clothes and the music. And, you know, it was a, it was a simpler time, and I feel like, I feel like we've, we've all moved away from that, unfortunately. And I think, but I think that's why it still resonates with people. Mm -hmm. I also think that there were a, the first several years were about real issues, right? Issues that young people were going through. Nobody was talking about it until then. It made young people feel relevant and seen. And I think those same issues are the same issues that young people are going through now. They want to be seen, they want to be relevant. Oh, I think Just maybe, say ditto. Yeah, okay. What they said. Uh, no, I definitely agree that it's because of the fans and um, that everybody wanted to see what Beverly Hills looked like, so <laughs> they watched our show. I think it's answered by everybody here, but it's definitely you guys. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Can I just say one thing? I want to clear something up real quick. I was never scheduled to be here yesterday. 
um, ever. I never do a convention on Fridays. I only do Saturday and Sunday. So for all of those that thought I was supposed to be here yesterday and bought tickets, I apologize. That's on the con, not on me. Tori? Oh, should we sing happy birthday to Shannon? No. Oh. no. <laughs> No, 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 let's get to questions, because that's it's, way it's your, more important. It's your call. Absolutely not. Let's okay. move to, we have a big cast here. Yes. We'll get to, I can't stop them. Do you. And it was just Jenny's birthday and Ian's birthday. Yeah, hold on a second. Ian just turned 60 years old. Look at this dude. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So if we're singing happy birthday, I think this guy deserves happy it. Happy no, birthday. No, 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 no. Let's move on. Thanks wait for the second, well wait wishes. A second, wait a second. How old did you turn? 42. <laughs> 60? Okay. Huh? That's a- amazing. I didn't even know that. Yeah. You can- <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> We've all stayed super oh, no, no, close no. over the years. I knew this is it amazing. was your birthday. This is the fun. This is true. I knew it was your birthday because I did a hard post for you, and you, you yeah, and you forgot to text me for my birthday. So <laughs> I just didn't know you were turning sixty. Oh. You can cut my arm off and count growth rings later. Let's get on with the show. I just have a few more questions before we turn it over to the audience. We'll start with Tori on this one. 293 episodes, 11 specials. Do you have any favorites or any favorite moments from any of those? Um, 293 episodes with my favorite one. There was one I wasn't in, so it was that one. (laughs) No. (laughs) There was only one. I think I got my nose done, so I had like a week off. Sorry. My favorite one. Um, I loved when we were all doing stuff together. I love, obviously, the end episode with Donna and David getting married. Tag your Uh, are we? Is everybody answering? Yeah, everybody's got the same question. Just a favorite episode or a favorite moment? Uh, definitely not my last episode because I didn't know it was going to be my last episode, so not that one. Uh, let's go to um, any of the ones in Paris because that was fun. My favorite episode. I always I stand by this. The, ep- the pilot episode was my favorite episode. Yeah. I don't know. There was just something about it. It was directed so beautifully by Tim. What was his name? Tim. Tim, Tim Hunter. Hunter. And um, hey, why are you laughing? <laughs> I forgot. Um, but it just looks so cool and I, when I watch that show it makes me want to watch our show so um, that's my favorite episode mm-hmm. you know this question is always asked and I'm always asking everybody do you remember the episodes I, there's, I, I loved the sleepover episode because I loved right for all the girls really that's where we came together I loved when I was kissed Jason that was fun <laughs> I love being valid, valid Victorian. I loved um, graduation for me was a really big one. I think Ian and I doing the egg, right? That was fun, right? And um, but I, actually, I could say I think when Shannon and I did, um, we were in the acting class together, and we had to perform. Um, no, not cat on head. Does somebody remember the? Huh? Yes, the slap. So I think that so I, there's a lot of different shows for different reasons that I like, and I love to hear why you guys like the show. So please let me know when uh, we see each other. I'd love to know. Summer episodes. That's what made us. Yeah, the summer episodes were very important to our show, um, and I think we all had a great time shooting those episodes. That was that was a fun uh, experience. Those two. You didn't have a good time shoot. Cool. It was. Son? It was it was always cool was when we cool. filmed them, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't... That's very cool. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Oh my okay, God. Wait. God. Oh, got it. But I, I think I, I for me I think my favorite episode was the was the sixties flashback episode we did. Time has come today. Um, cause we because we all got to do a lot of fun stuff in that episode. I don't know. See? Uh, I think when Steve turned the Walsh house into a porno shoot. That was a real lot of fun. That was just tons of fun. Oh, we made a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I used to try to ad lib every chance I get. I, there was one ad lib when L, the transgender vestite woman, <laughs> was uh, dating Chancellor Arnold. And we're at a function, and I'm like, oh my God. And I tell Claire, Claire. It's not a woman, it's a man. It's just, you do anything to take a smile off my father's face <laughs> and I'll never talk to you again as they're serving us food. And I'm like, oh really? And I'm looking at the food. Does your father prefer mussels or clams? <laughs> and it made it into the show. <laughs> oh, it was the greatest moment. That's gotta be my favorite. Uh, <laughs> Mine's it's all right. naughty stuff. This has become so inappropriate. This, I know. Guy, this next question. I don't see any eight year olds in here. I think I like the episode um, with the late, great Matthew Perry the best. I think mm -hmm. that one, <laughs> Jason was amazing in that one. He was amazing in that one. We had amazing uh, guest stars on the show, and he was top notch, I think. Well, thanks. We're going to get your questions now. If you have a question, step out into the middle aisle, and Kyle will get your questions. We'll do the best we can. And please keep all questions to 90210. All right? That's what, you're, that's what the panel is. It was the turning point. Once and, again. And please, no two-part questions, just one. Yeah, one-part question. We're going to try to get through as many of you as we can. These questions are $60, two for 100 <laughs> I get a cut, right? <laughs> all right, our first question. Okay. This is slightly embarrassing and humiliating, but I'm going to take a chance. Um, during the show's entire 10-year run, or even years after, did any, any one of you get a really stupid, crazy, embarrassing, or humiliating comment? Like, did anyone ever say something really stupid like oh my god oh wrap gosh. it up what is, what's the question yeah, like like did any, did any, did any like did someone say something really stupid like oh my god i used to masturbate to you to you guys like, like, yeah. or like that i used to have like weird sex there you like, go anyone, first like, really question stupid. right out of the did, gate didn't you say that to us yesterday when we saw you <laughs> come on it was you who was masturbating to us Don't be embarrassed. At least 50% of the other people here did it too. You're fine. A show of hands, who master? Oh, uh, that's next question. <laughs> Hi guys, it's so nice meeting you all. Tori, it was great chatting with you yesterday. You were so lovely, and Shannon, uh, it was so great seeing you again. I can't wait to catch up with you at the ta at the. But okay. Uh, so my question is, is for Shannon in regards to your character, Brenda. I know that back in the day, uh, you received sort of a lot of backlash for, for playing Brenda and, and sort of everything she went through. And um, paraphrasing this, but you, you said that at times it was exhausting and, and she carried a lot of drama. Um, was there anything about Brenda or, or something redeemable which you found you really connected to and, and a, a part of her that you... She was a bad bitch. I loved her. Hi. So um, my question is, being the age that you were when the show came out, what was it like dealing with the sudden fame and being famous in the world suddenly to that level. Who would you like to answer that question? Jason. Jason, go ahead. Me? me? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was, you know, it was, uh, I mean, I was 21 when we started the show, so I, so I, was, I was definitely, uh, it, was, it affected uh, me and it affected all of us um, greatly because we went from being people that could, you know, do, go wherever we wanted, do whatever we wanted. There was no, 
no you know parameters put on our uh, our travels and, and and our ability to to live our lives and then all of a sudden you know those summer episodes at the beginning of the second season everything changed because everybody all the young people it felt like in America were were watching the show and it did, and it hampered our ability to 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 go and do things that we, that we were used to doing so we all had to adjust our lives somewhat to accommodate for it but would, you know, but would, I, would any of us change it? No, of course not. It was an amazing thing to be a part of. But you do, you have to adjust your life a little bit to accommodate this newfound fame that you have. First season, everybody drove shitty cars. Second season, everybody's cars got a bump. <laughs> Third season, somebody bought a house or something like that. There were some progressions. I mean, we we're very fortunate to work in an industry that can be very lucrative. Keep in mind, there's a lot of hands in the pockets, agents, lawyers, managers, Uncle Sam. But um, I think we're all feeling really lucky that we were a part of this, something that touched people in a positive way. And there has been a, a little bit of loss of our personal lives. And while they, that may have resulted in a little less fun, uh, being part of this has just created more joy. So that's, I think it's a fair trade. Next question. Hey guys, I grew up on 90210 in New Zealand. Um, I had a question for Ian. How, m how much of Steve Sanders is inside of you? And uh, how, much, how much did you bring to the character? Because he is the funny, funniest dude on TV. He Thank you. amazing. You know, when I auditioned for this, when I auditioned for this, I needed a job. I just didn't want one, I needed a job. In my audition, I had to pick up the sides, the script, in New York City, and I had to drive in because there was no fax machine in 1989, or if there was, I didn't have one. And I walked up this office, and it's a big office, and there was a stack of scripts, and there was a sign-in sheet, and a legal pad has 50 opportunities, 50 lines, and there were easily 50 scripts. And I said, hello, and someone in the back said, sign in and take a script. And I'm thinking, and I'm looking at all these scripts. So I signed in Ben Dover, <laughs> and I, I grabbed all the scripts, and I'm running down, waiting for somebody to grab me, and I got to the screen test the next day. It wasn't a screen test, it was an audition with Tim Hunter, and, everybody, and I had worked my stuff all night with a scene partner, and I knew my three, my three scenes, Kelly Taylor's the biggest bitch and all of Beverly Hills, all that. And I showed up, and everyone's like, hey, was, is, you have some sides, is there a script? Because I didn't get one, I was like, I need one too. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I think they hired the right guy to play Steve Sanders. And we look alike, so. I look like Steve Sanders, so they hired me. Hey guys, thanks for coming out. Uh, so my question to you, for the panel, whoever wants to run with it. Filming as young adults, it's an influential time for all of us. Was there any facets of your characters that you felt bled into your real life? And also a quick shout out, my wife's 40th birthday. That's why we're here. Chris. Happy birthday. I love you. Yeah, happy birthday. Thanks. You know, I, I don't think that for me, it was the character bled into my life, but I do think my life bled into the character. I think one of the reasons the show lasted so long is there were personal truths in our lives that they started to put into the characters you know, the high wire because I did the high wire. The guys, you know, I don't know. Everybody had something that went on. And they started to, I think that that was the thing. I don't feel like Andrea bled into my life so much. A lot blended in for me. Um, they, just from 10 years of writing, you know, they're, they're kind of looking at our lives to give them ideas. And the music stuff and the DJing stuff and all of that really crossed over from my own life, which was, it was great. But it was hard at the same time because it started blurring the lines a little bit of going to work and doing a show and then going home and having a personal life. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change any of it at all now, looking back on it. But back then, it sucked. <laughs> it you, was, you had a nightclub. It was really hard. In real life. I had, oh, I promoted like four nightclubs. That was, and, and that was one of the, like one of the things that David Silver, like, like that's what came over to David Silver's side was that. Oh, 
All right, our next question. Hi, my name is Victoria, Lily's daughter. And me and my now one to know bestie Lori was wondering if you guys had fun doing the show. Did we have fun doing the show? You did so good just asking that question right now. That was amazing. Good job. I had a great time doing the show. Uh, ten years of my life, I didn't miss one day other than when a relative passed away. It was like a jungle gym for me to play on every day. Great time. I, I personally had an amazing time shooting the show. It was, it was uh, one of the greatest experiences that, that, that any actor could get to experience. I, I agree. I actually, uh, the show shaped our lives. Even when we went to move on to do different things, the show and what you guys have brought to our lives have brought us to our lives right now. So it was great. I know it's windy. It's really windy in here. <laughs> I'm so afraid that you're gonna... Um, le- what was the question? Did you have fun doing the show? Yes, fun doing the show. No, we had so much fun. I think that the most fun, fun part for me was meeting all of these people up here on stage and like getting to know them and be have this special bond with them for the rest of my life, you know, and that's such an amazing thing that we all have each other to turn to. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. Victoria, I love you. We met yesterday. Wait, can you guys hear us in the back? It's okay? Yeah, it's all okay. good. There's a second set of speakers. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just all being together. We're stuck together for life. What is that when you're stuck together? Like Velcro? No. Blue? Well, Velcro sticks, so that's yeah. It, yeah like a that's booger. What you were going for. Like a book. Like Fantastic. a booger. Ooh. Yeah, herpes we, sticks also, right? We can pick I'm a booger just, and flick it and get rid of it. You can't, yeah. We can't get rid of each other. Why Temporary do you tattoo booger? stick. Bunch of things you can <laughs> draw from. Sorry. Thank you. We'll love you guys forever. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love you, Lori. Hi. The premiere of the reboot was, it needs to be said, the reboot was brilliant. I don't care what anybody says. The writing was fantastic. The day of the premiere, I made my entire workplace dress up as 90210. I was Brenda. And it was so fun. We, I borrowed a surfboard from Abercrombie and Fitch. Who knew surfboards were that big? Um, but it was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming back together and bringing that back to us. Hi, everybody. You guys mean so much to me. Um, I was introduced to the show when I was 13, right before the reboot on The CW came out. My mom was like, oh, you want to watch 90210? Let me educate you, because she watched that show. She had viewing parties with my dad every week in the 90s. And so we spent that weekend before the new show um, premiered on Soap Opera Network. They were having a three-day marathon. And we, it's one of my best memories with my mom. And it was a true bonding thing for us. So I was just wondering if you have been able to bond over the show with your kids. And you've got more kids than any of us. Maybe you should address this first. That's not true, Jay. (laughs) That he knows Um, of. Right. (laughs) My God. God. (laughs) My agent's going down for having me come to this thing. Um... Uh, no, so my, my kids, my oldest son, Cassius, has watched it. He's, he's really into acting now, so we've had a bit of bonding with that. Uh, my other kids could care less that, that I did the show. And it's the last thing that they want to watch. They have way more important things to do, like talk about stuff that I've done that they haven't watched. You know, my kids had never seen it, so they're adults now. And when we did the reboot just before that, they watched it and my oldest daughter who's just turning 30 said to me mom that was the coolest show that was really and I never asked them to watch it and I'm so it was really great for them to be able to see it and to see a part of my life that they weren't alive in yet to see I I said like you get to see a piece of my life that you weren't a part of I don't know it's if anybody has kids 
there's nothing like more exciting for them to be able to, I think, get to see you and get to understand that you're a person, right? They see another part of you that they don't, they wouldn't have seen other than being a parent. So I loved it. I thought it was really cool. My kids are too young. They, uh, 10 and 12, maybe my 12 year old. I have the entire series on a, a, on a hard drive and it's all the original stuff with the original music. And I'll unleash it to them. Wait, how day. did you get that? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have one of those. Yeah, what is, I'm the only one that has the entire series. And then, on a hard drive with the original music? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, while these guys, while these guys were bouncing around, I was going to. So this guy nappy. has weird stuff like that. He stole things from the set. He is. Yeah. So this is Public Enemy number used, one right here, as far as <laughs> 90210. Steven. Um, Ian, they want to know if you have the key. I do have the legacy key. Are you kidding? Of course I have the legacy key. But the series you I also got, stole a jukebox from the Peach Pit. The show was over. It's crazy. It was like Anything crazy. That I just like ripped it off the counter. It was glued down. down. I didn't expect. Did you know they were glued to the counter? Yeah. Oh, because you tried to move them right. to for a shot. No, because oh, nobody else stole one. What are you talking about? Of course we didn't know it was glued down to the counter. You don't have any mementos from the set. No. Oh wait. What do you want? I see. Wait. <laughs> Tell the story the you, last day when they like wrap that set and you. <laughs> oh, I just like that. Okay, that's a wrap on the Peach Pit series. Wrap on the Peach Pit. Rip. Oh, these and are glued I down. Grabbed one of those counter uh, jukeboxes. Jukeboxes. Tore it off and there's some some vinyl. The the surface whatever the veneer was and I'm walking and Paul Wagner goes, Hey, where are you going with that? And I was like, I'm going I'm going home. <laughs> and I looked at him. He looked at me and I'm like. Just, just I kept walking conspicuously. Oh my God! The the wardrobe ladies used to say, "You need to bring your truck because we need to get rid of all these clothes." Who didn't walk home with clothes? I didn't want any of the clothes, which is really well. I saw the way you got dressed. No wonder. Right. Exactly. These guys were never my friends. They let me walk out of the dressing room with my shirt buttoned. Who wears? It's like I didn't have a mirror or a friend it's on It's funny, set. one of the things that Ian didn't take were the, uh, the bathing suit shorts that he wore with the slit up the side. He didn't want any of those, and I, I was, I've always been shocked. So surprised. So Me surprised. Too. So surprised. Oh, man. They what do the girls perfect. have to say? <laughs> Wait, what do we have to say? We loved all your crop tops. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> they my, were popular. My daughters wear they those. were popular. <laughs> I wanted to be one of the cool kids. I couldn't grow my fucking sideburns like Jason. <laughs> couldn't wear my hair up like Luke. Brian's balls didn't drop yet. I had to do something. You can all leave me alone. Why's well, everybody gotta be picking on me? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <gasps> um, first off, thank you so much on behalf of everyone just for being here. I know this is a, I feel like I'm in a dream right now, but um, I had the privilege of meeting Luke about 10 years ago. And so I asked him a question that I'm going to ask you. And then um, I'm just, um, I know there have been so many storylines and I'm just curious to know what, um, what kiss just stands out the most to you. Who? Are you trying Jesus. to like, like any so, of us who kissed each other? Like I'm not, honestly for me, yeah. um, probably the kiss in the Porsche with Luke is stands out the most to me, and was pretty fabulous too. <laughs> You guys have one answer. My mic isn't working. It's really. Oh my god! Like... <laughs> what, what's your answer? Please, somebody say the kiss with Brian's girlfriend Tiffany is their favorite. Please, someone say that just so we can see Brian. Can Tiffany. I just say that just so so this part of the conversation? Tiffany, by far, <laughs> was the, that was every time I kissed her. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Love you, Brian. <laughs> Jenny, you gotta have a oh, good answer I for this one. I had a lot of kisses. Um, 
probably with Brandon. Let's talk about let's talk about your jaw. Oh my God! I love um, talking about her jaw. Yeah, <laughs> this is just my theory. Okay, <laughs> I, I have TMJ, uh, really bad. <laughs> and when I chew, this is really personal. When she chews, you just hear it popping, like pop, <laughs> pop every bite she takes. Only if I chew on this side. Uh huh. But anyway, I think I got my TMJ from Jason. <laughs> What, like TMJ is like an STD? I don't know, but my jaw didn't clock, uh, click, and then we made out like a million times. Yeah. And then my jaw started clicking. So I, so I broke your face somehow? I'm pretty sure. Huh? But you did like open your mouth pretty wide sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jenny. I, I didn't mean to it's break okay. your face. Okay. So yeah, I think of you every time I click. <laughs> Just a lot. Aw, that's sweet. It's a special bond. It's a real special bond. Aw. Uh. I, it you. was the key for me. My most memorable kiss was the kiss when I broke Jenny's face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. You can have. Wait, me. I want to know Donna and David's. Sorry, <laughs> Tori and Brian's. What was your favorite kiss? Well, no, Shannon put me on the spot, so I just, I, I quickly jumped to Tiffany just to let it go. Oh, okay, how do you yeah. feel about that? <laughs> it was the kiss, the one, the one time we made out on the show. We did? Yeah, remember? How do so you not that's where the click came from in the jaw. <laughs> Jennifer You've been blaming Lee. Jason this whole time, Thank and you. it came from Tori. Jennifer Thank you, Brian. Lee, you don't remember that, that episode? You guys remind her what? of that episode. <laughs> At the oh, beach house. Oh, they, cut, about. they cut it out. It was, yeah. Oh my God. You had me going. I can't remember. We haven't gotten to that season yet, so. <laughs> um, so my question is, if you guys didn't do the reboot and you look back at like, would Donna and David still be married? Would you and, would Kelly and Brandon ever be, get back together? Would Brenda come back to the show? Like, what would you want, ideally? I would want Brenda to come back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do mean that, because I, now as um, we've had the great honor of watching the show back for the podcast, I've become such a fan, and just like, when Brenda left the show, something left with it, and I, and I miss it as a fan of the show. So. Thank you. The truth. Is Steve still married to Janet then? Would you still be married to Janet? And would you yeah, still be yeah. married to, married to David? Steve's an orangutan farmer. <laughs> living in the cloud forest of Costa Rica, where he's also the personal life coach to the world's most interesting man. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so most of the people in here all have some sort of connection with you. And... Um, You've created memories and you've gone through different episodes that have been emotional. So each of you or certain members can answer this question, but what episode stands out um, in your spirit the most with Luke Perry? Oh, geez. We remember. So I directed the episode um, when, uh, when uh, Luke's, uh, Dylan's fiance, Rebecca Gayhart, got murdered by her father because he was trying to kill oh Dylan, God. right? And he killed. Jenny hasn't he... seen that episode yet. Don't tell her. 
Are you, you guys haven't even got to, episode, alert. to season six yet? Oops. Sorry, Jay, to interrupt. Jen, earmuffs, please. Earmuffs. Okay, Jay, continue. I won't remember anyway. It's fine. <laughs> That be for, for me for me and Luke making that because I directed that episode we had we had a wonderful time working together on that episode because that episode was such a was such an emotional roller coaster for him and uh, and so it, as difficult as it was he and I really uh, really enjoyed the the intense working uh, together that we had on that episode. Okay, we have about five minutes left. Let's get about two or three more questions. Hey everybody. I, I, I feel like a lot of my questions have been asked by now, so it's nice Quiet, to see Mom. you all. I will say, Jenny, you just touched on this. Um, I watched this show, I was the same age as the characters, high school, college, so I graduated when you guys graduated. And what's great about the show is that now I'm re-watching it as an adult. And you kind of touched on this too, Gabrielle. Um, so it's nice to kind of look back and I see things differently. I see characters differently and I see the storylines differently than I did when I was young. So I guess my question would be, when you rewatch it now, like you're doing for your podcast, for example, what is one thing that you kind of felt at the time, or you, your understanding of the character and the li character line was then, that when you look back, it's different? <laughs> what, do you, what, is, what, is, what was different then as opposed to when we watch it now? What when you, as you've grown as people, when you look back on it, how is your understanding maybe a little bit different? I'll tell you one for me, like the Brenda Kelly Dillon storyline, for example, when I was that age, I was like, you know, very Dillon Brenda. But when I look back, I'm like, be careful. <laughs> She's even more I so will get Brenda up Dillon. from my seat. <laughs> That is the most sacred relationship oh, ever. Me. And she was a whore, you guys. <laughs> this was my best friend who slept with my boyfriend. Shame on you. <laughs> oh my God. Nothing's changed for me, honey. I still look back and go, what? I did love you guys, um, but what changed for me is I feel like it was about you two in the end. I, w I loved your friendship, and I loved that you kind of came back together. And for me, I felt like it was always about you two, and I loved looking back through that lens and seeing that. Yeah, you're right, because the, it was a <laughs> messy web there for a while. But it, um, I think that it was important that we both ended up sort of overcoming that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last question. Last question. Um, this is a question for Ian. Um, Ian. Ian. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Next. Ian. Um, I actually don't think dude, he gets to ask the question. I warned now. so many next. people in my line. I'll have Ian. Shannon kick your sorry. ass. Anyways. Damn um, straight. Here I come. This is, dodge, baby. Dodge. A question for Ian. You've All right, done, what? What? You've done voiceover work before. Can you tell us about your time as being, as being a voice actor? That's the last question? We're, we're kind of no, but it's not the last, last question. question. Yeah, come to my table. I'll be happy to table. talk to you about yeah. it. This yeah. is not Let's get one more table. question. One more real question. Thank you. Last question. Please make it about 90210. Well, I love you all. I grew up with, um, with you guys watching you in high school. Um, my last question is, what was it like working with Luke? What's it like working with Luke? I, I knew Luke for years before we were on 90210 together. We were in New York City doing different soap operas, and that bastard was always so goddamn handsome, I hated him. <laughs> and he was always so damn cool, I hated him. But we were friends, and I kind of loved him, but my God. Um, you know, Luke was an incredible soul. Um, he had the ability to uh, make people feel very at ease, um, working on the set whenever we would have other artists work with us. He would always speak to them in a way that would really cultivate great work out of them. As a friend, he was a best friend to all of us. 
Um, it's a huge hole that's left mm -hmm. that he's passed away, but uh, we all have very fond, lucid memories of, uh, of a best friend, and uh, mm -hmm. wherever he is, I'm sure he's feeling the love that you had and everyone else has for him today. Let's, let's get one short question in. One short one and we're done. Hi, this is for David Silver. I have some extra OJ. Do you want a party? Come on! Yeah! Go! Let's do it. Let's do it. The cast of 90210. Give it up. Thanks, everybody. Ian Ziering, ladies and gentlemen. And Tori Spelling. Shannon Doherty, Jenny Garth, Thank you. Jenny Garth, Jason Priestley, and Brian Austin Green. Go visit their table, get some photographs, make it happen. One more time, 90210. You got it? Go this way, yes, please, thank you. They're still in the tent, give it up, come on. One more, they give it up, here we go. Excellent job. Thank you so much. This is Ross Marquand, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight, which is awesome. So, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.